Hello, hello, welcome. This is Antonio Lanis, and I'm going to try something different. Um, I haven't really been recording lately, and a lot of the things that are happening in my career as an artist are a lot, and sometimes I find it hard to talk about them all in post. Um, I can spend hours and hours typing and writing reflections, but I figured that making a video about things that have been happening in my life um, around art will be more efficient. So if you're here, welcome to learn more about the art world um, as a full-time artist. So I wanna start a little bit more about context for this week. Um, there were three major things um, that happened, uh, actually four. Uh, my birthday was on Monday and I am so happy again for all the uh, birthday wishes that you all sent me and Again, I won't go into the details, um, but I'm just very happy that I received a lot of attention and a lot of um, good wishes. And then on Friday, moving on, fast forwarding, um, I had three major events. The first one um, was the podcast launch of the Me Vacuno Porque second episode. I've done a lot of marketing. Um, my team, our team has done a lot of marketing lately, and it's been a lot of good work. I feel super happy that the podcast has um, gathered a lot of attention. I've received good feedback from people, and we have over 50 downloads as of um, January uh, 20, 2024. And to me, to see that we have 50 downloads, um, it's amazing. So thank you so much for everyone who has shared and who has um, contributed to the, to the project. Um, please continue to, to, um, to share, share with everyone, share with um, your neighbors, share with your friends, share with um, everyone. I do want to take some time, some time too, today to talk about the people behind the podcast. Um, this has been um, a huge project. If you are new to the Antonio Alanis art um, page or um, what's going on, we received a grant through Black Public Media to talk about um, vaccine equity in um, the Latino Latinx community and I applied early in 2023 to essentially um, combat misinformation and promote um, information about why your community decided to get vaccinated, right? And we are on our second episode and super grateful that I'm working with that super talented team. Um, I've, I've told um, this many times already, uh, I'm working with uh, Dorian Gomez Pestaña. And uh, recently we're working with uh, Marina Fela Castillo, who is helping us with the marketing and the social media management. So if you've seen a lot of that, um, it's because of Marina. So Marina, if you're watching this, um, it's been good. It's been good. Thank you so much for all the work you've been doing. So that was the first thing that happened um, on Friday. A lot of fun things. Like I said, um, the podcast has had 50 downloads and... If you haven't listened to it, you're more than welcome to listen it. Listen to it. Um, it will be available um, at mevacunoporque.com slash podcast, right? And I also want to take you to see the podcast um, promotions and, and things that are happening. So, so this right here is the thing or the social media post that Marina designed for us. And we have um, the amazing um, Cecilia Polanco here, um, who is one of our participants. Um, and this episode really goes more in depth in terms of um, why people got vaccinated, right? As I was saying earlier, the project goes more into uplifting our communities. Um, one of the reasons I decided to apply was because I did not see our community members um, appear in spaces that 
gave us a platform to talk about our experiences, right? I heard a lot of um, non-community voices, which are also important, but I was really missing the the community aspect and perspective, which I decided to apply, right? So again, you can you can go on and, and listen to this podcast um, by visiting. So make sure you go on to the Me Vacuno Porque podcast. Uh, you can see the preview, haven't watched it. This is um, the amazing Jamie, really cool. Um, and you can also listen to the first and second episode. So again, the second, ep- the second episode says um, community members discuss why they decided to get vaccinated and they touch on themes from protecting themselves, right? Their families and contributing to the well-being of their community. So you will see um, people talk about their experience and you can watch this or listen to it on a, on Spotify, right? So again, I won't talk about the podcast today um, anymore. I want to talk about the other upcoming things that I had on Friday. So I don't have a picture of this, but after the podcast launch, um, I was invited to an an amazing project done by Building Integrated Communities, um, the Language Access Collaborative. And... It was a beautiful project where a lot of um, um, organizations come together to promote language justice and equity in in different um, locations throughout the state. I was really honored to be in a space to see that North Carolina is changing and that Dr. Hannah Gill's uh, work, as well as Susan Clifford's um, a, Institute for the Study of the Americas, UNC Chapel Hill's uh, work is um, really expanding the way that the state um, serves their communities uh, who do not um, speak English and who speak languages um, that uh, are not represented right now in, in society, right? Um, in, in things that normally we need to, to, to get to. So it was a beautiful event. I said, I don't have any pictures, but I was there because I was recently commissioned to make a illustration for the project. And I will be sharing the project a little bit later. Um, You will see that it was a illustration that merged a lot of my interest. Um, as you know, um, I'm a Latino artist, and I also was a Spanish teacher before becoming a full-time artist um, and also working in, in, in the nonprofit world. I used my art to illustrate the beauty of languages, the beauty of working together, the beauty of using language as a bridge between populations, between people, between experiences, between cultures. And I wanted to continue using um, my work um, for for that purpose. And super grateful, super, super grateful that Susan Clifford uh, reached out to me uh, late 2023 and said, Antonio, we have a project coming up. Are you interested in working with us? And I accepted and it was a a great project to work with. I learned a lot um, in terms of what the organization is doing. And again, I'm super happy that I can use my art for this kind of work. Um, Super important that I get to make a living out of this, that this work that promotes, um, you know, um, more equity in our communities and that allows us to get the things that we need to get to to live happy, healthy lives. So it just gives me chills that I was able to to, to collaborate on this regard, right, with building integrated communities. So super grateful to Susan, Susan and Dr. Gill, um, Dr. Hannah Gill, thank you so much for the trust, um, for allowing me to participate in this work. And I can't um, wait to see where the illustration goes. Um, one of the things that I saw at the event was that um, language uh, partners, uh, organizations received um, awards for the work um, 
and my illustration was part of their part of their certificates. So that to me meant a lot to see my work in certificates um, that partners will be able to take home. And just thinking about the idea that my work is in places that I have never really been, right? Um, those certificates and, and, and things will go all over the state. And that to me is amazing that my work continues to live to in other places in other cities and super grateful for that um again i just was reflecting on that after leaving the the, the event and of course i got the, the amazing opportunity to to work with um not to work with but to um to see and catch up with um margarita a, Ramirez, who's the ED at Centro Unido Latinoamericano, right? Who is working um, at uh, at Marion in McDowell County in Western North Carolina, um, and I got to see her amazing team, uh, Laura Zapater and uh, Carlos, who are amazing, amazing people. It just fills me with pride to see Latino leaders uh, changing the landscape in, in, in this state and in, in this country. So. Again, I super, super I am super happy. And you know, the thing is that working as an artist, I get to work in a lot of things that overlap, right? Um, I I've talked about my art, how it promotes awareness, how it promotes um, opportunities to talk about things that are important to me, and I'm able to merge, mold, and fold my art into many intersections, including language justice and language accessibility and um, many, many, many other things. So, so that was the second thing. The third thing, which was a huge, 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 huge part of the um, work that I've been doing lately um, at the Inter-Latin American Artists Collective. Um, this is part of the um, Inter-Latin American Artists Collective, um, composed of uh, seven artists, um, including uh, Leticia or Leti Alvarez, uh, Luis McKinney, uh, Pepe Caudillo, uh, Peter Marin, Cornelio, Jose Manuel Cruz, and myself. Right? And this is our second time doing a exhibition at the Durham Arts Council. Huge shout out to Durham Arts Council. Durham Arts Council, thank you so much for the invitation of allowing us to, to return and for offering the space. Um, I'll go more into details in terms of um, how I felt about the overall experience, uh, which is super positive. So the Inter-Latin American Artists Collective started about two years ago, two or three years ago, I think two years. And the purpose of this exhibition was to continue talking about work that we all did um, as of 2023. And you guessed, uh, right? If you thought that I included my work from the podcast into the um, exhibition, you can see a detail here of the illustration that I use in the podcast called um, Protegiendo a Mi Comunidad en Contra del COVID-19 or Protecting My Community Against COVID-19. It's an illustration that I use in the podcast, and um, it was great seeing it printed for everyone to see. Um, the piece itself is 18 by 24 inches. Um, but yes, let's go talk, continue to talk about the experience with the um, um, Durham Arts Council. It was great seeing the um, amazing people, um, Margaret DeMott, a Sherry, uh, Sherry DeVries, um, including um, Colleen, who were so um, so nice and welcoming to, to us last night. It was a beautiful opportunity to talk about the, the art and, and the changing landscape of, of Durham. So, you know, I had a couple of few minutes before the exhibition um, started uh, and people starting to trickle in. And again, it was it was a beautiful, beautiful thing. Right. So the screen right now that you're seeing is the um, invitation 
for funders and for um, visitors who uh, were attending the, um, the exhibition. By the way, um, if you want to go watch or see the exhibition, it will be there until March 10 in 2024. Um, at the Durham Arts Council. I recommend that you log in to their website and look at the um, times where you can go and see it. Uh, it will be uh, available and there are two levels. Two levels with uh, our, uh, our participants or collectors work uh, spread throughout the, the Durham Arts Council. So again, it was super exciting. Um, if you missed opening exhibition event on the 19th. You can still come back on February uh, the 16th, 2024, and you can see the, the, the exhibition, um, hopefully with um, with as many of, of, of us artists and, as, uh, and just like the people who came to visit. So, super excited about this. Continuing on, I want to talk about the things that happened yesterday at the exhibition. So, um, you know, this is us preparing for the exhibition. We did um, a lot of uh, prep work, and you can see all of us getting ready for it um, early in, um, in January 2024. Um, again, happy that we're working with a lot of talented people. So again, it was part of the third Friday during Mart Walk from six to nine. Um, a lot of people came. There was a lot of lot of um, a lot of life. A lot of people who, who showed up, right? And I am specifically thankful to the creative team and um, change makers here in Durham. I was just so happy to see. A lot of people come out. Um, I don't have a lot of pictures in terms of everyone who came. Um, you know, I'll be sharing them in social media later. But these, this, this core group right here is so special to me because um, we have uh, people who are working in the podcast, including Dorian. Uh, Dorian is right here um, with uh, podcast illustration, and you know Queenie, who is another amazing community leader. Uh, my cousin Leslie, who showed up. Uh, Leslie, thank you so much for being here. It meant the world to me to see you. Um, thank you. And then of course we have Oscar and Carly, who are um, other uh, group of friends um, as well. Uh, Oscar is doing amazing work right now with um, voting, uh, voting registration, uh, canvassing work. Um, I'm super happy that uh, he was able to come out last night. And a lot of fun things are happening in Durham. And again, it's just the perfect place, the perfect environment for people to to begin to to grow, to to expand and to um, to connect, right? If anything, what this exhibition taught me is that Durham has a highly supportive uh, group of a uh, artists, activists, and creative cultural workers as well will come out and, and support, right? So super, super happy that um, you all came out uh, last night, right? So here we were just, you know, having good time, catching up, um, in learning about one another, sharing experiences, and having a good time overall. It was, it was such a good event. Um, and also you can see here that the postcard or the donor... A, a card is the same as this uh, podcast illustration that I have on the background. And finally, to end the video, I know it's been over 19 minutes. Um, I want to talk about uh, some of the other pictures that people took and uh, show them this way. Um, Other artists that um, participated, um, this was Liz McKinney. Uh, <clears throat> Luis did an amazing um, new piece uh, called Cheche. Luis, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Um, Luis is really exploring fun things. Um, I saw a lot of things that are just growing with, with her work. 
he started to combine um, acrylic painting uh, or painting and um, and just you know molding. I don't know what he used to mold. Was it clay? Uh, I don't know. But he started to add a three dimensional three dimensional aspect to to his pieces. And I found that super, super important that um, he's growing and he's expanding his craft. And I really admire this piece because it's just very reminiscent of our Mexican um, folk art. And just the exaggerated features are something that I really admire. So um, I I always tell Lisa that I love his work and, and I'm so happy to, to have participated with him. Um, also, shout out to Luis as well, because if it weren't for him, I would not have been in the Inter-Latin American Artists Collective. He did reach out to me um, and invited me to an info session, and I became a, uh, a member of, of, uh, of, the, um, of, the, um, of the collaborative, so super happy. Right. Also, I uh, have other pictures um, from Jose Manuel Cruz. Jose Manuel made a shirt with his designs, as you can see here. Um, I just love Jose Manuel's work. It's colorful. It's it's um, energizing, and the things that he does with his work is just amazing. The things that I get to to learn from him, the the patterns, the textures that he explores, and also the color. Um, super excited to to also exhibit with um, with Jose Manuel, um, and I really loved how he, how he came with a personalized shirt for the show. Um, Jose Manuel, you rocked that shirt. Um, I saw on social media that people were really interested in buying it from you and asking if if you were selling them. Um, again, congratulations! I I never really thought about doing anything like that, um, and I just um, I'm going to say how happy I was to see it in there. So, okay. <clears throat> again, thanks to the John Marks Council. And then I want to pause in this picture as well um, from our very own Dr. Edith uh, Nieves Lopez. Dr. Edith um, is another participant of the Me Vacuno Porque podcast. She is a pediatrician and was able to collaborate in the podcast and talk about the myths and demystified these myths in, in the project. Um, you can see more of her work in, project, in, in the project as well as the episode number two, right? And Adif, Adif, you just know how happy I am to see you. Thank you so much for everything that you do and the energy, the connections, and for inviting all of your friends. Um, Edith is, she is the life of the party. I, I love her. Um, I love her work. I love the way that she, you know, um, is so proud and happy about her culture and just the, the, the energy that, 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 she, that she provides. So, Andy, thank you so much. Um, it was great to meet um, Norma Marti and, and, and meeting other other artists um, as, as well that, that you brought in today. It was great seeing Cristina, Cristina España. I'm super excited to have spent time with her and, you know, with Claudia. And also, I I catched up, I uh, caught up with a Candy Carver, who is here at the center. Uh, Candy Carver is a... It's a it's a beautiful artist um, who lives here in in the Triangle, and also does a lot of work around representation. And her work is just um, colorful. It's um, it's just amazing the thing that she does with with her work. Um, you can you can find her uh, online. She does a lot of prints as well as uh, murals. Um, she's been doing a lot of murals lately, and I'm super happy to see her work as well. Um, and of course, you can see a, my image appearing at the um, at the, um, at, the at the at the note, uh, the postcard that um, that um, this, this beautiful lady here is holding. Um, so you know, again, this is the last picture that I want to talk about today, um, Dr. Adif. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much for stopping by and 
snapping a picture of the Me Vacuno Porque podcast. And um, again, just to summarize, today or this weekend was amazing. We had the second episode podcast launch, launching, as well as the um, illustration reveal, and finally the, the ELAC 2024 exhibition opening reception. So again, if you ever wanted to know what a full-time artist is up to, I hope that this was a an opportunity to learn more. Um, and again, I wanted to try something different so that I can talk more about the things that I'm um, living and creating instead of just typing and writing hours and hours and hours. I think it's easier for me to to share my life um, this way through through video and through multimedia. Um, again, thank you so much for taking the time. If you are new, um, you know, highly, uh, well, I, I highly encourage you to, um, to, 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 um, you know, keep learning more about the work and the things that I'm up to. You can also find me, um, online at antoniolanisr.com and, 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 and follow my social media there. Um, I'm pretty active in the things that I'm uploading and creating. So again, it's, Super exciting. I cannot wait to tell you all or, you know, continue to share my life as an artist and continue to document this in video format. So, again, have a good rest of your day.